Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, GA prepares to battle President's ill-advised ATC privatization bill, more astronauts confirmed to attend Air Ventures Apollo reunion, and FAA approves a new airworthiness certificate for B-29 DOC. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. It's March 17th, 2017, and this is Airborne Limited. Okay, the fight we've all been fearing is most definitely on. Many in the general and aviation business community have been concerned about the Trump administration's plans for the next generation of air traffic control, and with Thursday's publication of the administration's budget, we now regretfully know that Trump will push for the privatization of ATC to the potential detriment of many in aviation who are not part of the airline's aristocracy. As seen in other parts of the world, when ATC privatization is undertaken, the airlines wind up in primary control of the system, and most other aspects of the aviation community suffer for it. In the meantime, aviation entities all over the country are gearing up for what may be one of the most significant battles yet. EAA started off the response, noting that, quote, On Thursday, the Trump administration released a budget proposal that confirms one of our greatest concerns regarding the future of U.S. general aviation, the potential separation of the FAA's air traffic organization into an independent, non-governmental organization. This proposal mirrors one introduced in Congress last year in the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. EAA strongly opposed ATC privatization then, and we strongly oppose it now. ANN will have a lot more to report as we analyze the most recent information, but suffice it to say that we're not happy either. Hear this, you better not miss Oshkosh 2017, because it's going to be a classic year. NASA astronauts Buzz Aldrin of Apollo 11 and Harrison Jack Schmidt of Apollo 17, representing the crews who made the space program's first and last lunar landings, will attend Oshkosh this year as part of the Apollo program reunion on Friday, July 28th. Previously confirmed astronauts attending this event will include Frank Borman, Apollo 8, Walt Cunningham, Apollo 7, Fred Hayes, Apollo 13, Jim Lovell, Apollo 8 and Apollo 13, and Al Warden, Apollo 15. The reunion is expected to be the largest gathering of Apollo astronauts at Oshkosh since the memorable 1994 Salute to Apollo program that brought together 15 of the men who were the faces of the American effort to put men on the moon. Quote, this will be a rare, unforgettable gathering of the people who met the challenge of flying to the moon and safely returning, representing hundreds of thousands of individuals who contributed to its success, said Rich Larson, EAA's Vice President of Communities and Member Benefits. You may never get another opportunity to see these people in person and up close, as you will at Oshkosh this summer. After the break, Doc the B-29 gets legal. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero news.net. The B-29 DOC has officially completed Phase 1 of its flight test operations with the FAA approving a new airworthiness certificate for the historic Warbird. This approval means DOC's friends can begin touring with the airplane, albeit with reduced flight limitations. Quote, we've been working for the past several months with the Wichita FAA office along with the FAA team in Washington, D.C., and we are pleased that we have satisfied the requirements for Phase 1 of flight test operations, said Jim Murphy, Doc's Friends Restoration Program Manager. The FAA's approval means we can begin the next phase of our restoration and flight operations plan, and that includes sharing our historic warbird with air shows around the United States. The FAA granted a special airworthiness certificate to Doc's Friends, removing the flight limitation restrictions on distance and flight pattern, 
Dogs Friends communication and event planning team are in final negotiations with multiple regional air shows, including EAA AirVenture and Oshkosh. The 2017 B-29 Dog Tour schedule will include multiple public events in at least six states. After these messages, Free Flight partners with Becker. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Free Flight Systems and Becker Avionics have partnered to offer a complete ADSB solution by combining the strength and integrity of the Becker Avionics BXT6513 Mode S transponder with Free Flight Systems 1203C, SBAS GNSS sensor, and Ranger RX ADSB receiver. These remote mounted solutions will provide a complete way to equip biz operators with ADSB in and out. Concord Battery Corporation is pleased to announce the TSO C173A approved RG332 series batteries exclusively defined as drop-in replacement for numerous versions of Airbus helicopters. The RG332 design also allows for rotation of the temperature sensor and internal battery heater connector for proper orientation in any aircraft. Hilton Software's Wing X Pro 7 now includes ADSB traffic and altitude-based weather and was reportedly the first major EFB app to introduce both ADSB weather and ADSB traffic to your iPad. Both are free upgrades. Meanwhile, the company says that an Android version of the Wing X Pro 7 is coming soon, along with additional updates. The U.S. Court of Appeals will hear oral arguments this week in a case brought by the City of Phoenix and residents of several of the city's neighborhoods who say new flight paths to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport has deteriorated their quality of life. The city filed a lawsuit against the FAA in June of 2015. The Kristen Eagle II was introduced at EAA Oshkosh in 1977, and so at AirVenture 2017, sport aviators will celebrate the 40th anniversary of this award-winning aerobatic biplane. Designer Frank Christensen, EAA Lifetime 3663 president of Kristen Industries, will be in attendance this year to note the anniversary. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A major aerospace milestone may occur within a few days. SpaceX CEO Gwynne Shotwell reports they plan to launch its first previously flown rocket on a revenue mission by the end of March. The mission would mark a significant milestone for the company, which sees the reusability of boosters as a key to bringing down the cost of launches. The planned mission would use a Falcon 9 booster that has already carried a satellite into space to launch a satellite from Luxembourg's SESSA. Shotwell announced the mission at a recent satellite conference in Washington, D.C. She added that there were five more launches using previously flown boosters planned by the end of the year. At that same conference, Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos said that space tourism is the future of space travel. Companies will be able to hone their launch capabilities using recycled boosters and adopt a business model that is similar to commercial airlines. Quote, if the airline throws the airplane away at the end of every trip, very few people are going to be able to afford to take that vacation, Bezos said. The FAA has taken major steps over the past year to move towards integrating UAS into the national airspace system in a manner that they believe is both safe and efficient. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta will speak to the FAA's achievements to date, as well as the next steps towards full integration. This symposium will also feature an FAA executive panel moderated by Administrator Huerta with other high-ranking government officials and industry executives who are working on public policy to further the deployment of unmanned aircraft systems. Panelists include Peggy Gillian, Associate Administrator, FAA Aviation Safety, Terry Bristol, Chief Operating Officer, FAA Air Traffic Organization, 
Winsome Linford, Deputy Associate Administrator, FAA, Office of Airports, James Eck, Assistant Administrator, FAA, NextGen Office. Presentations will be followed by a question and answer session, and ANN's Airborne Unmanned Team will be there to cover the event. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week.